Okay, hey guys, welcome to um, a reaction video, our first reaction video, and today we're going to be um, looking at Mr. Nightmare's three creepy true stories, uh, three creepy true story school lockdown stories. Now, personally, I've never had a lockdown. We do have jewels down then, but uh, yeah, let's jump in to it okay gonna try not to pause it was a typical boring day in calculus only it mm. was friday seventh period meaning the week was almost over and spring break would finally be upon us so and the uh the link to the original video, three creepy two, creepy true school lockdown stories, will be in their bio. So yeah. Getting in their seats, I could tell. We didn't have a test that day, like a lot of my friends did with their other teachers. So our teacher in the middle of class just decided to start playing games with us on Sporkle.com. He was a very laid-back teacher like that. As we were doing some brand logo quiz on Sporkle, I remember the exact moment it happened. Right after my friend answered a question, I remember the exact answer too, Adidas. The Dean's voice came through the loudspeaker. He sounded panicked and frantic as he told all the teachers this was not a drill and to go into lockdown. I actually got the chills and I got goosebumps on my arms as our usually laid back teacher too seemed panicked as he ran to turn off the lights and ushered us to the back corner of the room. We all sat in silence for about two minutes. And then the usual buzzing that came from a panel in the back of the room ceased, indicating that the school must have cut all the power. We all looked at each other, realizing this must be serious. A few more minutes of waiting later, we heard a man screaming at the top of his lungs coming down the hallway. Two girls in the class actually started crying, which made all of us even more scared. As the screaming got closer to the classroom, the lunatic-sounding man started banging on the lockers while Yeeks. screaming, I'll kill all of you. Uh, uh. It was at that moment that I started to fear for my life. My teacher shushed us as we all looked at each other to see our peers' reactions. The banging then moved from the lockers to our classroom door. And that's when one of the crying girls screamed no. The banging on the door only grew worse as the man started screaming, open up. Two of the girls in the class were crying out loud now. See, this is normally the scariest part if I was on the lockdown. I would be scared of the freaking man coming in with a AK. Just like, AK guys, pay your hands up. Like, oh my god. I would put my hands up the second he walked in. Now, it felt like an eternity that that man was pounding at the door. But eventually, he finally continued down the hallway, screaming like a mentally insane person until well, maybe we that's what it is. Anymore. I'd say ten minutes later, though it felt like half an hour given the situation, the dean came back on the loudspeaker explaining the situation, which was surprising for him to do. He explained that some apparently mentally unstable person oh, entered wow. the building and assaulted the woman sitting at the front desk, causing her to flee the building screaming, and staff wasn't sure if the man was armed or not. Now this was before the school had cameras or could afford proper security, so the school was wide open to something like this happening. The staff had done a sweep of all the hallways and classrooms and couldn't find him, so the dean instructed the teachers to resume teaching but to keep all the doors locked and to not let any students leave for any reasons. The most disturbing part, however, is that one of the janitors working the night shift found the man sleeping in one of the storage closets near the back end of the school. Yikes! And according to rumors that were spread by my peers, sticking out of his pocket was a 44 Magnum. The janitor must have done something stupid to wake him up, for example, leaving the closet door open, because by the time a police officer could arrive on the scene, the man was gone. My entire class, as far as I know, to this day, has no idea if this man was ever found, but I like to think that right now, he's being given the proper help that he needs. 
So that's story one, and now let's move on to the creepier ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, woohoo! I love this. My school has two lunch periods. First lunch period is for all sixth graders and some seventh graders. So it's the second lunch period is for the other half of the seventh graders and all eighth graders. The lockdown happened in the beginning of October. The day the lockdown occurred, it was overcast and rainy. Nice school. During the first lunch period, I heard four loud booms. I personally thought it was thunder, oh, but the entire soft? lunch crowd started screaming. I was thinking those kids were just serious pussies, but the campus security came in and started yelling at people to go into the multi-purpose room, and the kids who were in line buying lunch had to throw out their lunch and come inside. Me and some friends went inside the room along with a huge group of other kids. Everyone was curious as to what was happening. Our multi-purpose room is huge, and the back wall of the room is made of see-through glass. When me and my friends were rushed inside the campus, security was covering the glass with the curtains, and there were adults at every exit. My friend Eric was curious, as well as the rest of us, so he asked one of the adults what was going on. When he came back, he said, You know how right in front of TMS there's those houses? I replied, Yeah. There's this mentally disabled crazy man that barricaded himself in front of his house, and he's threatening to commit suicide and kill the cops if he's evicted. He was walking around outside of school watching kids in a weird way, Eric told us. It turned out the man was also a registered sex offender, making matters worse. We were stuck in the multi-purpose room for a whole hour, taking up two periods. After the whole thing was settled, we were escorted to our classrooms one by one. I later found out that the man lives next to my friend Brandy, who told me about the previous Halloween when she saw the same man at his window cutting his arm and writing in his own blood, don't come here or I'll kill you, on his window. Of course, yeah. being Halloween, people, including Brandy, assumed it was just for the holiday. But after this horrific incident, yeah, we knew stay, this man stay was safe mental, on Halloween. and we're glad he never got near us. Story three. I'm 22 years old, fresh out of college, and I recently got a job at my old high school as a sort of computer intern in the school basement. The basement of the school is very messy and disorganized. As okay, um, first thing. Why are you a student working, working at the school? Like, don't you need a diploma or something? But uh, let's skip to. Let's skip to this. Is a flat screen TV mounted on the wall and oh so satisfying air conditioning, a luxury about, the like students and serious. teachers cannot enjoy in the school. And of course, all the school servers and other computery stuff. I got the job because three of my old computer teachers flat out adored me. I could actually consider them as real friends, not just teacher figures. So they all helped tremendously in landing me this job. It's been great. Until something that happened a few weeks ago. My two co-workers that shared the office with me, Dave and Gary, weren't in the office at the time. They were upstairs working on papers or whatever. I was eating my sandwich during my lunch break when I got a phone call from one of the women in the front office telling me the school was on lockdown and that somebody possibly armed had entered the school. There wasn't much that I could do other than turn off- Okay, well then why don't you lock the door like literally barricade it with like that desk right there or something like if you're strong enough off the lights because surprisingly as nice as this little office was it didn't have an actual door to it Dang just it. a big opening and the door well then if you have some sort of drill or carving knife if you see this right here why can't you just like behind it why can't you just like uh like carve it out 10 out of 10 knowledge guys door to the whole basement didn't even have a working lock. For my own safety, I did turn off all the lights in the office and my computer screen. I kept my phone on the desk, texting both Gary and Dave, but they wouldn't respond. I sat down there in the dark, playing games on my phone for like 20 minutes, 
waiting for the call from up front to tell me to resume working. I had no idea what was happening. I couldn't hear what was going on upstairs from down here. But I was not allowed to make any calls until I was informed that the lockdown was over. Then, the noisy basement door opened. As the creaking echoed across the basement and into my office, I sat up from my seat, wondering if I should call out Gary or Dave. I was eager to get some info from them. Someone then came running down the stairs and their footsteps were approaching my office. I pushed away my chair and crawled under my desk. Somebody entered the office but did not turn on the lights. There was just silence. Is this another I can't even describe person? the fear I was experiencing. I felt like if I made one sudden noise, I'd be a dead man. Suddenly, my phone dinged as I got a text message. I felt my entire world shrivel up and die at that one moment as I clenched my teeth in fear. Footsteps suddenly moved closer to me until I finally dove out from under the desk in capitulation, begging whoever it was not to kill me. And just then, someone grabbed my arm and pulled me up. It was some guy in a red plaid button-up, jeans, and a reddish-black cap. He Is this told me, real? It's okay. I'm just down here hiding with you. What's going on up there? I whispered to him. He kind of ignored my question and asked me if there's an exit down here. I told him, yeah, around that way. Before he could do anything else, I asked him, who are you? There was a brief moment of silence. Before he started explaining, he was coming in to pick up his son when a teacher told him to hide. After his explanation, I checked my phone and saw the text I received was from Dave. It said, Dude, this is fucking crazy. Some guy with a gun shot Mr. Buckley. He's wearing a red shirt and a hat. Whatever you do, don't come upstairs. I was about to reread that text out loud to the man until I realized. I looked up and felt my stomach sink. The man seemed to catch on to my suspicious stare. Panicking, all I could think to do was to run for the upstairs. A gunshot echoed through the basement and I could hear the bullet ricochet off something metal in the darkness. But thank God the bullet missed me and I made it upstairs. Fortunately, police were waiting at all exits, including the basement exit, and caught the man the second he opened the door. More good news. Our teacher, Mr. Buckley, survived the gunshot. It was That's later good. determined that the man and Mr. Buckley had some beef for whatever reason, but that was never revealed. All we know is that Mr. Buckley couldn't have done anything that would have warranted this kind of reaction. And I know that the sound of that gunshot will forever echo in my mind. And guys, go subscribe to Mr. Nightmare. Great. Props to him. And, uh... The link will be in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!